Daytona is a casino. You deposit your hard-earned safety rating into the slot machine, and it spits out positive or negative I rating. But you can use these tips to give you the edge and survive Daytona. At number 10, we have high brake bias and steering ratio. Having a high brake bias will allow you to brake hard for crashes without fishtailing. Usually around 70% or so on the brake bias will do the trick. This is also important if you ever need to make a green flag pit stop for the longer races. A high steering ratio, or low steering pinion in the next gen car, allows you to be smoother with steering adjustments, which helps you greatly in a closely spaced pack. And at number 9, we have actively manage closing speed. Let off the gas smoothly and early if you're closing in too fast on somebody. This avoids stackups that will result with you getting run over. It's very common for somebody to lose focus and not react in time to an abrupt stackup, so doing everything you can to help dampen this stackup will help preserve your race. At number 8, we have keep track of problem drivers. By making mental notes throughout the race about who is squirrely, who gives bad pushes, who jumps out of line erratically, etc., we can fairly accurately predict where wrecks will happen. This information can go a long way towards avoiding the big one because you can position yourself in the safest spots with relation to these problem drivers. And at number 7 comes a tip from YouTuber Racing with Rob, link in the description for his channel. He says to get to the bottom off the start as quick as possible. A large amount of wrecks happen off the start. If you're running a conservative game plan, you want to be on the bottom lane as soon as possible to give yourself multiple outs. You can avoid early wrecks by diving below the yellow line, but make sure to avoid touching pit road if this is on the front stretch. You could go at least a lap down with the penalties. At number 6 we have, don't block unless you're sure you're going to get hit squarely. Blocking is sometimes necessary in late race situations, but a poorly executed block can only hurt you. Commit early and be precise with your positioning so that you do not get hit off center by the people pushing you. Be ready to react to the shove and keep the car going straight and you'll be just fine. And at number 5 we have unchecked tires and fuel when pitting for crash damage. There's a good chance you'll end up with damage at some point this week at Daytona. You want to fix as much damage as possible to stay in the draft. Even if you've spun out, there's a chance to fix an additional 14 seconds of crash damage that's more valuable than getting new tires at Daytona. And at number 4 we have keep a half second gap in front and behind you if you're waiting for a wreck. If you find yourself at the tail end of the pack, don't just ride around. Keep active with your gaps in front and behind. If someone is on your bumper, let them by. There's no use on being conservative if you are not giving yourself and those around you a chance to react to the big one. I see a bunch of people at the tail end of the pack wreck along with the big one because they're simply just too close together. They're not giving themselves a chance. And at number three we have get good at bump drafting. Contrary to popular belief, there is a bit of skill when it comes to Daytona. In order to contend for top fives, you're going to need to give stable and confident pushes at some point. In addition to being ready for the big moment, people are more likely to follow your moves if you prove to be a good pusher. And at number two, we have, if you're going for the win, qualify and control the race. People tend to think Daytona is all luck, but in reality, a majority of the races are contended by the people who are able to control the race. Starting in the front is the best way to achieve this. For most of the race, Daytona is two lanes, so positioning yourself in the first or second row in the pack is a very effective strategy because there's nowhere for the people in the back to go really. Once everything starts going three wide, the wrecks start to happen, you'll be in front of it, you're good to go. And finally, at number one, make friends in your race. Daytona is always easier with teammates. Even if you don't bring your friends to the race with you, there is plenty of time to make them before the race starts. Private message people around you on the grid saying that you'll work with them. Most of the time they'll be happy to have an ally as well and it'll work out to both of your benefit. You'll be amazed at how much easier Daytona becomes when you have people to work with. If you enjoyed this video or found any of the tips helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. What other tips have you found helpful for super speedway racing? Leave a comment down below. If you're new around here, I post qualifying guides weekly and more general guides every few weeks. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you on the track.